Hi, I am Dr. Sujata Gupta Kedar and I am going to deliver a lecture on child counseling skills. As we all know that humans are the social beings and because of lot of social factors an individual in some way or the other need help and guidance of others. We all know that our mother and father are our first counselors. Then comes our teachers, elder siblings, grandparents and other elders, school counselors and society that guide youngsters for successful living. Due to numerous social factors such as explosion of knowledge, industrialization and change in lifestyle because of socio-economic setup, the need of professional guidance and counseling is felt in the present day society. With this class, I would like my learners to develop an understanding of counseling, children's skills in a possible systematic and sequential way. I also want my learners to develop skills in planning strategically for an effective children counseling sessions and applying it. This module is divided into five parts. First, concept of counseling. Second, basic child counseling skills and we will start with attending skills. Third will be listening skills. Fourth, basic empathy and fifth will be questioning skills. Before getting into the skills of counseling, the concept of counseling should be understood. Counseling is a method that is structured in a series of steps that aims to help people to cope better with situations they face. Counseling involves the individual to understand their emotions and feelings and to help them make positive choices and decisions. Counseling helps people to ease initial distress resulting from a challenging situation and encourage short and long term adaptive functioning. Now the question arises, what is adaptive functioning? How well a person handles common stresses and demands in life is known as adaptive functioning or positive coping. But I am sure you would like to know what does counseling involves? Establishing a trusting relationship with the child or the client. Helping the child tell their story. Listening carefully and attentively to the child. Respecting the client irrespective of age, caste and gender. Being non-judgmental throughout the process. Providing confidentiality to the client providing correct information to the child, helping the individual to make informed decisions, helping the child to recognize and build on their strengths, helping the child develop a positive attitude, maintaining a professional relationship with the client. As we have discussed the important points, I want my learners to know what they should not do while counseling, judging interrogating, blaming, preaching, lecturing or arguing are few things that a counselor should not do. Do not make promises that the counselor cannot keep. Do not make decisions for the client. Do not let clients to become dependent on the counselor. Now that you have understood the concept of counseling, let's move on to the next topic of my presentation that is skills of child counseling. Learning some basic skills of counseling is the first step to counseling. These basic skills include attending skills, active listening, showing empathy, probing and questioning skills. Let's now start with the first most important counseling skill that is the attending skill which help to build a firm foundation in any supportive relationship. Attending refers in the company of someone else and giving that person your full attention both physically and psychologically to what 
they are saying or doing. In a one-to-one -one counseling relationship with the child, this is the supportive service that a counselor must provide. If the counselor fails to do this, it will mean the client is not being supported and so in the process the client may not be able to disclose or make progress. Attending also means a counselor must pay attention to everything a client says and does. This includes reading the client's body language and also taking into consideration all the silences and pauses in the conversation. These are skills that require being attentive in any situation and means that a counselor is given their full attention and listening to the client at all times. To understand it further, I would like to explain to you the ways to attend the client. First, welcome the client warmly. This will make the child more comfortable and more relaxed in the counseling environment about disclosing personal information about their emotions, feelings and thoughts. Make eye contact with the client. This will assure the client that the counselor is interested and have value about what the client has to say. Looking at the client as they speak also shows the counselor is respectful. The counselor should also be aware of the tone of their voice during the time in the client's presence. The counselor should slow down the speech that will make the client feel more relaxed and less rushed. It also convey that the counselor has adequate time to listen to the client's problems and concerns. Facial expressions of the counselors must also convey interest and comprehension. The ability to track the flow of what the client is saying is a key skill that the counselor must also be confident of demonstrating. Without this ability, the counselor will not be able to provide the level of supportive service a counseling client requires. This can be explained with the help of SOLER. S-O-L-E-R is an acronym and it helps to show your inner attitudes and values of respect and genuineness towards a client. S indicates sitting comfortably at an angle and distance, the counselor face the client and adopt a posture that shows the counselor's involvement with the client preferably an extra angled position for some clients as long as the counselor can pay attention to the client. For example, a desk between the counselor and the client may create a psychological barrier between the two. O indicates open posture. The counselor should ask herself or himself to what degree his or her posture communicates openness and availability to the client. Crossed legs and crossed arm posture is not recommended as it may be understood as diminished involvement with the client whereas an open posture gives a signal that the counselor are open to the client and to what he or she has to say. L means leaning towards the client from time to time and listening attentively indicates the involvement and genuine interest of the counselor towards the client. On the contrary, to lean back from the client may convey the opposite message to the client. E indicates eye contact without staring. It conveys the message that the counselor is interested in what the client has to say. If the counselor catches herself looking away frequently, the counselor should introspect and ask herself why she was reluctant to get involved with the person or why she feels comfortable in his or her presence. R indicates relatively relaxed. Remain relatively relaxed 
should be the trait of the counselor. The counselor should try to be relaxed or natural with the client. The counselor should not be nervous or engage in the distracting facial expressions. In this case, the client may send a wrong message to the client and the client may wonder what it is in himself or herself that makes him or her so nervous. So we can say that effective attending puts counselor in a position to listen carefully to what their clients are saying or not saying. Now, let us understand listening. Listening refers to the ability of counselor to capture and understand the messages clients communicate as they tell their stories, whether those messages are transmitted verbally or non-verbally. Listening makes the child who is talking feel worthy, appreciated and respected. When the speaker is heard attentively, the speaker responds positively by interacting on a deeper level, perhaps by disclosing personal information or by becoming more relaxed. By listening carefully, the counselor is encouraging the child to continue talking as well as ensuring communication remains open and positive. Now that you know the importance of listening, let me give you points on how to listen while counseling. Counselors must demonstrate active listening by employing the various techniques throughout their counseling relationship with the client. These include facing the client, sitting straight or leaning forward to show attentiveness is also useful. Maintaining eye contact shows the speaker you are interested in them and what they have to say. Responding correctly by hmm, eyebrow raising and supplying other more direct responses prompts for the clients to continue talking. Focusing solely on what the client is saying will enable the counselor to follow the logical flow of the conversation with ease. Only ask questions for clarifications. Now, as you know that listening is a skill in counseling, you need to understand four important skills of active listening. To listen to and understand the client's verbal messages is the first skill any counselor should have. A client who share his or her story with the counselor often contains a mixture of experiences. That is, what happened to him or her, the behaviors, what the client did not do or failed to do, and the effect or the feelings or the emotions associated with the experiences and behavior. The counselor has to listen to the mix of experiences, behavior and feelings the client uses to describe his or her problem situations. The second important skill to listening is to listen to and interpreting the client's non-verbal messages. What actually are non-verbal messages? Non-verbal messages are general appearance such as grooming and dress, body postures, body movements and gestures such as smiles, frowns, raised eyebrows, twisted lips, facial expressions, voice related behavior that is tone, pitch, voice level, intensity, inflection, spacing of words, emphasis, pauses, silences and fluency. Observable physiological responses such as quickened breathing, a temporary rash, blushing, paleness, pupil dilation. Physical appearance such as fitness, height, weight, complexion. Counselor should learn how to listen to and read non-verbal cues. Counselor need to learn how to read these messages without distorting or over interpreting them. The third skill to listening is to listen to and understand the client and the context in which 
he or she is talking. The counselor should listen to the whole person in the context of his or her social settings. Then listening with empathy is the next skill to listening. We will talk about empathy in detail in the later part of this chapter. Next is reflective listening. The process of restating that has already been said so that the client understands that the counselor have clearly heard what they have disclosed. It is a confirmation that a counselor validates the client by acknowledging what is being said and by providing further opportunity to talk. Then comes paraphrasing when a counselor offers a concise statement of the client's message. Active listening is unfortunately not an easy skill to acquire. Counselor should be aware of the following hindrances to effective listening. Inadequate listening. It is easy to be distracted from what other people are saying if one allows oneself to get lost in one's own thoughts or if one begins to think what one intends to say in reply. Counselors are often distracted because they have problems of their own, feel ill or because they become distracted by social and cultural differences between themselves and their clients. All these factors make it difficult to listen to and understand their clients. Next hindrance is evaluative listening. Most people listen evaluatively to others that they are judging and labeling what the other people is saying as either right or wrong, good or bad, acceptable and unacceptable, relevant or irrelevant etc. They then tend to respond evaluatively as well. Next comes filtering listening. We tend to listen to ourselves, other people and the world around us through biased filters. Filtered listening distorts our understanding of our clients. Then comes rehearsing. If you mentally rehearse your answers, you are also not listening attentively. Counselor who listen carefully to the themes and core messages in a client's story always know how to respond. The response may not be fluent, eloquent or practiced one, but it will at least be sincere and appropriate. Next is sympathetic listening. Although sympathy has its place in human transactions, the use of sympathy is limited in the helping relationship because it can distort the counselor's listening to the client's story. To sympathize with someone is to become that person's friend. The fourth part of this module is about empathy. Empathy is the ability to place oneself in another's shoes, to know and understand what the client is experiencing from within his or her frame of reference. Basic empathy involves, according to Egan 1998, listening to clients, understanding them and their concerns as best as we can and communicating this understanding to them in such a way that they might understand themselves more fully and act on their understanding. It also means that the counselor must momentarily forget about his or her own issues, rather put the entire focus on the client and try to see. Empathy is thus the skill to identify and acknowledge the feelings of the client without experiencing those same emotions of that of the client. It is an attempt to understand the world of the client by temporarily stepping into his or her shoes. But then, as any other skill, there are few stumbling blocks to effective empathy. They are as follows. Avoid distracting and distressing questions. To pursue their own agendas, that is, to get more information, counselors 
usually ask questions to the client and in the process they ignore the feelings of the client. Cliché should be avoided. Clichés communicate a very negative message to the client. He or she feels that his or her issues are not grave or serious. Clichés like, I know how you feel, should be avoided since the counsellor actually do not feel it. To understand is not empathy. Giving response to the client's feelings is important, but the counsellor should not manipulate or distort the content of what the client is telling to the counsellor. Advice should be used carefully and should be used to build the self-confidence in the client. Repeating the client's words is not empathy, but parroting. Counsellors who parrot what the client said do not understand the client, are not with the client and show no respect for the client. Empathy should always add something to the conversation. Avoid conflict and arguments with the client. Now we move to the last child counselling skills and that is questioning skills or probing. Skilled counsellor should ask questions and probe and that is considered as a skill in counselling. Probing and investigative by the counsellor involves questions that enable clients to explore further any issue that is relevant of their lives. Probes can be in any form. The counsellor can frame a question, statement, non-verbal prompts, requests, single word or phrases. It helps to encourage client to tell their stories in case of non-assertive or reluctant client. It helps children to identify feelings and behavior. It helps to fill in missing events of the issue. It helps children to understand their problems and situations more. It helps the child to be attentive or relevant issues. There are few points to remember while using probes or questions. The question asked during the counselling session should be asked with caution. Too many questions should not be asked as it makes the client feel interrogated. When counsellors get stuck, questions often serve as fillers. Two questions in a row is not advisable. Unnecessary questions should not be asked which mean a question for which the counsellor does not really want to know the answer should not be asked. Although close-ended questions are important but should not be asked too many. Asking open-ended questions is a required skill in counselling. Open-ended questions are the questions that require elaborated answers. The answers more than a simple yes or no. What, how and tell about this are examples of open-ended questions. These types of questions are non-threatening and they reassure the client and encourage description. Before I wind up the lesson, I want to discuss the most important skill of counselling and that is Summarizing. Summarizing refers to put everything in a nutshell. Important points of the whole conversation should be summarized that may sometimes be useful for the counsellor. The idea basically is to provide a focus to what was previously discussed. Summaries are useful for the following reasons. It gives direction to clients who find it difficult to initiate. Repetition can be prevented. As a result, it will pressurize the client to move forward. A summary helps the client to focus when the session go haywire. With this, we come to the end of our lecture. I can conclude by saying that counseling is a process that is used to improve the well-being of the individuals who are in trouble and are not able to decide or cope both physically and psychologically. 
counseling is a process that should be done by the skilled persons. Skills to communicate are one of the most important aspects of counseling and so it should be integrated in the counseling process. The kind of skills required to do counseling are attending, listening, empathy and questioning. Skilled and professional counselors will attend and listen to the child, use both empathy and probes to help the client to understand their problems. Who is the client? What is the need of the client? And what is the problem situation are the three dimensions which will help the counselor to decide about which communication skills will be used and how it will be used. Thank you.